Welcome to Vetscope. In this video, we'll be looking at using the calendar. The calendar in Vetscope is a very useful tool for organizing your appointments and visits. Effective use of the calendar can allow for better time management and getting more out of your day. Let's start by looking at the page per day calendar. As its name implies, it displays a calendar for a single day. We can access the calendar screen by clicking on the calendar button from the main menu. At the top of the calendar screen is the name of the calendar currently displayed. You can switch to a different calendar by clicking on the name and then selecting from the drop-down list. There will be some default calendars already in the list. We will see how to amend this later on in the video. Now let's look at setting up a calendar. First, we will set up the time scheme. This is the time frame that is displayed on the calendar and how it is divided across the workday. To set this, click on the clock icon in the upper left of the screen. You may then be prompted to enter your master password. When asked to add or clear current times, as this is a calendar we want to add times to, click on add. This next prompt gives us an option to enter a gap in the form of lines between what is already on the screen and where our new time scheme will go. With a blank calendar like this, this number is the amount of lines from the top. In order to not have a gap, we will change the number to zero and then click OK. In this next prompt, we will set the time scheme for the whole calendar. What is required is the start time, the time every day begins with, the end time, the time every day ends with, and the intervals in between, which is what way you want to divide up the day. It is important to think through what times are best suited for your practice before creating the calendar and booking appointments. Once times are in place and appointments are booked, if you then decide to change the time scheme, the appointments will not automatically update. For this example, we will make a start time of 9 a.m. This is entered in a 24-hour clock format as 09 full stop 00 full stop 00. The end time we will use is half 7 in the evening, so this will be entered in as 19 full stop 30 full stop 00. For the time interval, we want the day to be broken down into 15 minute portions, so this means it would be entered in as 00 full stop 15 full stop 00. Now that we have all the required information entered, we can click OK to finish. We can see that on the left of the calendar, the time has now populated in 15 minute intervals just as we entered. If you just entered in a time scheme and you decide that you want to change it, click on the clock icon again. Enter in your master password and then click on clear. Your times will be deleted and you can enter in a new time scheme using the process we just saw. There is another option for creating a time scheme. This is using separate blocks of time. This is a more efficient use of the calendar space and is useful if you only do scheduling for certain times of the day. For example, if you only take appointments between 9 and half 12 and then from 2 until half 4, these can be entered in as two separate blocks. To do this, click on the clock icon. Enter in your master password and click OK. When prompted to add or clear times, click on Add. When asked to enter the number of lines to insert a gap, since the calendar is blank, we will enter in a zero to not have a gap. We will now enter in the time scheme the same way as before for 9 to half 12 with 15 minute intervals. The first block of time is now created on the calendar. We can now enter the second block of time. We can repeat the same process of clicking on the clock icon, entering the master password, and choosing to add times. Now, when asked to enter a number of lines to insert a gap, we will enter the number one. This will put a one line space between the time scheme that is already on the calendar and the times that we're about to add. We will now enter in the time scheme, the same way as before, for two to have four. We can now see that there are two separate blocks of time on the calendar, as opposed to one continuous time scheme like we had earlier. Now that we know the different methods for setting up calendar times, let's look at booking appointments. First go to the calendar page for the date intended for the appointment. The date of the calendar page currently being viewed is located at the top of the screen. It is also displayed in numerical form below the calendar name. On either side of the date are arrows. 
you can use these to move forwards or backwards to a different date. Alternatively, you can just click on the date itself and change it by clicking on the desired date in the drop-down calendar. You can also click on the Today button to quickly bring the calendar back to the page for today's date. Once you're on the right date, to book an appointment, click on the row next to its start time. A search window will appear. You can search for the client or the animal here by typing in their name and then either clicking on enter or pressing enter on the keyboard. For this example, we will type in the last name of the client. A list will appear containing each animal for the client. If you search by the animal's name, all animals with that name will be listed. Click on the animal that the appointment is for. A new window will appear with details for the appointment. If you need to adjust the size of this window to ensure it is completely visible, click and drag it to be the desired size, and then click on the Adjust Window button on the left. This window will now open in this size going forward. Now let's look at the details displayed in this appointment window. At the top of the window is the full name of the animal that the appointment is for, and the animal's picture if there's one for them in the animal screen. On the right of the window, the animals for the client will be listed. You also have the option to show RIP'd animals in the list by selecting No in the Exclude RIP field at the bottom right. Clicking on the gray arrow next to an animal's name will bring you to their details in the animal screen. If you need to switch the appointment to a different animal of the client, you can just click on their name. For example, we will temporarily change this appointment from their cat Leo to their dog Miley. On the left of this window is the date and time of the appointment, the animal's name, the client's name, and contact numbers. This information will automatically populate, however, there are a few things that can be added. The vet who will be tending to the visit can be assigned by clicking into the VS field and then clicking on the name from the drop down list. If the person you want is not in the drop down list, you need to add them in the staff screen. If you want to reference who booked the appointment, this can be entered by clicking into the Edited By field and then clicking on the name from the drop down list. Just as with the vet, if the person you want is not in the drop down list, you need to add them in the staff screen. Lastly is the problem field. This is the reason for the visit. Clicking on this field will bring the drop down list of problems. These are the same as the drop down in the visit screen. You can then click on the one you want. If you want to enter a problem that's not on the drop down list, you can double click into the field and type it in manually. We can now complete this booking by clicking on enter at the bottom of the window. The calendar now reflects the booked appointment and some of its key details. Appointments are also reflected in the clients and suppliers screen. To view this, go to the clients and suppliers screen, find the relevant client, and then click on the appointments tab. In the tab is listed the appointments for the client. You can control what appointments are visible by only showing ones after a particular date. This date can be selected in the top right corner of the tab. Now let's return to the calendar to look at arriving an appointment. When the client arrives on the day of their appointment, click on their booking in the calendar to open the appointment window. Once the window opens, click on the Arrived button on the left. This will automatically open the visit screen for this appointment. Certain information will have carried over from the calendar, along with the client and animal details for this visit, the problem that was entered in the appointment is included as well. Based on when the Arrive button was clicked, the date and time of the visit is captured at the top of the screen. The animal is also entered into the waiting room. Here we can see when the appointment was for, when they actually arrived, and how long they were waiting. This is based on when they arrived in the calendar to when they are discharged in the visit screen. Back in the calendar, once an appointment has been clicked as arrived, it will appear in green. So that's how to book and arrive appointments. Now let's look at how to move and delete appointments. There will be times when a client has to reschedule their appointment. Vetscope makes moving booked appointments very easy. To reschedule an appointment, click on the appointment and go into its details. Once in the appointment window, click on the cut button on the bottom left. Now in the calendar, click on the new date and time the appointment is for. Once the appointment window opens, click on Paste on the bottom left. The appointment's details will populate. Click on Enter to save the new booking. The booking has now been successfully moved to this new date and time. Now let's look at deleting an appointment. If an appointment has been booked and needs to be deleted, click on the appointment to go into its details. 
Once in the appointment window, click on the Clear Entry button on the bottom. When prompted to delete the entry, click on Yes. The appointment will now be replaced with the word Cancelled. If you want to see the details of the cancelled appointment, hover the mouse pointer over the word Cancelled for a few seconds and a pop-up with the details will appear. The time slot itself can still be used again just by clicking on it. Now, if you want to remove the word cancelled from the calendar, hold down the shift key on your keyboard while clicking on it with the mouse. In the message window that appears, delete out the cancelled appointment details and then click OK. There will be a prompt whether to enter the message for today or all days. As the word cancelled was only on the calendar for a single day and not multiple days, we can click on today. The word cancelled is now removed from the time slot on the calendar. Now let's look at using colors in the calendar. To further organize your calendar, Vetscope has colors available that can be applied. Each color has a significance and can be used to mark sections of time. To see what each color represents, move your mouse onto it for a few seconds. A tooltip will then appear with its description. To change what the colors represent, go to the main menu. Click on the Password tab, you may need to use your master password. Once in the Password tab, click on the Color sub-tab. On the right of this screen is a listing of the colors and their meanings. To change what a color represents, click into the wording and type in what you want. In this example, we will change the light blue from Public Holiday to Training. The meaning of this color is now changed. We can see this updated in the calendar screen. By moving the mouse on the color for a few seconds, we can see it now reflects training. Now let's look at applying colors to the calendar. For this example, we will apply the light blue color from 11 to 12. To do this, click on the color first. Then click on the green box to the left of the start time. A prompt will appear asking how many lines to color. This is the count of individual time slots, starting with the start time, to apply the colors to. As we are coloring in from 11 to 12, that will be a total of four individual lines. So that means we'll enter the number four. We can now click on OK to continue. However, before doing so, there is something to note. If we want this coloring to be applied every day in the calendar, we can hold down the Shift key on the keyboard while clicking on OK. Otherwise, just clicking OK will apply the coloring only to the current calendar day on the screen. The color is now applied to the calendar for the amount of lines given. Even though there is coloring here, clicking on a time slot still allows for booking an appointment. To clear any coloring, click on the Clear button first, and then use the same process we just saw for applying a color. Now let's look at additional calendars. Vetscope doesn't limit you to having one calendar only. If you want to add more calendars to use, go to the main menu and click on Value Lists. Once in the Value List screen, locate the Calendar column. This column lists the names of the current calendars. If you want to edit a calendar's name, click into it to make any amendments. Once complete, click outside of the name field. When the prompt appears asking if you want to change the name, click on Yes. To create an additional calendar, click into the next available space and type in the name of the additional calendar you want to create. For this example, we will create a calendar called Clinic. Once the name is entered, this additional calendar is ready for use. Let's return to the calendar screen to view it. To view a different calendar, click on the current calendar's name at the top of the screen. A drop-down listing with all the available calendars will appear. You can then select the calendar you want by clicking on it. We will select the new calendar, Clinic. As this is a new calendar, before it can be used, it needs to have a time scheme set up, which is done using the same process we saw earlier. Along with being able to have many different calendars, Vetscope gives you the option for a calendar page to display up to five different rooms. This is called a multi-room calendar. Here is an example of a multi-room calendar. Each column represents a different room with its own time scheme. The name of the room is at the top of the column. Vets can also be assigned to each room. This will make them the default vet when booking appointments for the room. Appointments in each room can then be booked the same way as we saw earlier. and colors can be added per each room as well, using the same process for applying colors we looked at previously. To set up a multi-room calendar, go to the main menu and click on Value Lists. Find the same calendar column as before, 
and then click on the E button next to the calendar you want to use. In this example, we will use clinic. We will now be in the calendar name screen. Here we can assign the names of the rooms and their default vets. Let's first assign the room names. They are referred to as room headings in this screen. The room headings are listed in the row next to the calendar's name. The order that they are here will be the same as in the calendar screen. To change a room heading, you can click on it once to select a name from the drop-down list, or you can click on it a second time to type in the name. In this example, we will name the rooms cons 1 through 5. Now that the room headings are in place, let's assign default vets for each. This is done on the right side of the screen in the vet names row. The vets are assigned in corresponding order to the room headings on the left side. The vet selected in the first space will be assigned to the first room, and so on. Vets are assigned the same way as the room headings. If a vet is set up in the staff section of Vetscope, their names will be in the drop-down list for selection. Once complete, we can return to the main menu by using the back button and clicking on Menu. Now, in order for the calendar to display in the multi-room format, the multi-room setting needs to be in place. To do this, click on the General Setup tab at the top of the main menu screen. Once in the tab, locate the Calendar Type field at the bottom right. Click on the field and select Multi-Room Per Day from the drop-down list. The calendar is now set for Multi-Room. You can also set a default calendar here as well by selecting it in the Default Calendar Screen field. We can now click on the View Calendar button to quickly go to the calendar. Back in the calendar screen, we can see the multi-room calendar we just set up. It has the room headings we created and the vets we assigned. The time scheme can be set for each room by clicking on the clock icon and using the same process as we saw earlier. Another useful option for your calendar is the large animal setting. With this in place, when booking an appointment, your search will look for clients only and not for animals. This setting can be applied to both a page per day format or a multi-room format. To apply this, go to the main menu and click on Value Lists. Once in the Value List screen, go to the Calendar column and click on the E next to the calendar you want to make this setting for. For this example, we will use Main. Once in the Calendar Name screen, locate the Large Animal column in the center of the screen in the row for the calendar you want to make this setting for. Click on the box to put a tick in it. The calendar is now set. This concludes our video. If you have any questions, please contact Vetscope using the details on the screen.